So last time, we talked about regression and different kinds of more general regressions. So we talked from um, everything from linear regression to quadratic regression to regressions on polynomials of higher orders, as well as generalizing it to functions of different shapes, as well as generalizing to uh, multivariate regression of various sorts. Um, and so there's a, there's a general theme there that we're just going to review very quickly. And it's the idea that we have some kind of uh, data that we collect, some kind of variable y that we would like to predict, and we're going to predict it as a function of x. And so as we go um, through in complexity, uh, we can go from a linear model, right, assuming that y is a function, uh, a linear function of x. We can have higher order polynomials, models. We can have uh, multivariate models. OK? And et cetera, and et cetera. And there's lots and lots of these models that we can build. And what we're building up to here is this idea that to explain the data, if we don't know what the underlying truth is, you can go and build these models that are of co increasing complexity. So there's many more that I will not name here, but we can increase the complexity of the model. OK? And uh, there's this idea that. Um, you would hear sometimes people say that, you know, give me enough parameters and I'll fit any data. And it's, it's sort, of a, sort of a silly thing to say, but it's also kind of true, right? As you get more and more models, let's say that you have the same number of parameters as your data points, then you end up with the model that is exactly your data. But that's not really all that useful, right? So the question that we're going to ask in this lecture uh, is, is a bigger model always better. OK? We get this feeling that we can reproduce our, our data more and more closely, reproduce it more and more closely as we make our model more and more complicated. But is that always better? And what do we mean by better? What is the good metric for evaluating what's better? So that's the topic of the lecture today. And uh, what I'm going to start with is a, uh, a super simple example of a model. and. Uh, how we can build uh, models of various complexity in order to explain this data. So let's get started. Uh, and so what I've made here is some, uh, just a little bit of starter code to make um, a super duper simple data set. And this is all the data set is. It's five data points. OK, I've made them up randomly. There are some numbers on the horizontal axis that we're going to use as an independent variable. And we have some five numbers on the vertical axis that we're going to use as our dependent variable. Okay? So we want to build a model y as a function of x. That is our goal. And this is a, a really super simple, small example just to illustrate this point. Okay? So if we wanted to start, the first model that we will build is the linear model, because often that is the simplest possible thing you can do. So we're going to use, just like in the last lecture, the polyfit function and say p1 equals polyfit of my x-coordinates and my y-coordinates, and I would like a first-order model, please. So uh, we're going to make some points for plotting. So x hat equals uh, 0, counting by 0.01 to 6. That spans uh, something that's a little bit wider than, than, the, than the data we have. And uh, let's say uh, y hat 1 is uh, what happens in this P1 model, this first order polynomial model that we're going to build. So we're going to evaluate that with a polyval function as P1 and x hat. OK? So uh, let's um, do a hold on on the figure above. And we can plot x hat and y hat 1 as a red line, just like that. OK? So we're going to, here's the data, and here is the linear model. OK? Looks pretty good. This line seems to kind of go roughly in the middle of the cloud of points that we've generated. Works great. OK? Now let's try making a more complicated model, just for fun. OK? So let's say that we are also going to make a second order polynomial model, which is the next most complicated model. So we're going to, again, use the polyfit command. Uh, x coordinates, y coordinates. Now we're going to ask for a second order polynomial. y hat 2 equals polyval of p2 and x hat. 
and we are going to plot x hat and y hat to the prediction of the second order polynomial model as a, oops, let's go back here. Uh, let's say that we're going to plot that as a, uh, a black line. Okay, let's evaluate that and go back to our figure. Here it is. Okay, that is um, the red line is linear model and the black line is the second order model. Now already you're seeing that one, first of all, just by inspection because we have so few data points, it's kind of hard to tell which one of them is better. But I can already also see by eye that the black line actually goes exactly through two of the points, whereas the red line is not. Hmm, maybe this model is better. Let's see. Let's make an even more complicated one, okay? So let's try, uh, let's say we're going to make a uh, P3, which is going to be going through the same points, and I want a fifth order polynomial. So y hat 3 equals polyval. Um, P3 and x hat, same thing. I'm going to plot x hat and the prediction from my fifth order polynomial model. And let's say I want to make that a uh, magenta line. I'm going to run that. Oh, I can't have a fifth order polynomial because this fifth order polynomial has six points and I only have five data points. So, so let's, let's be less ambitious. Let's do a, a fourth order polynomial instead. Okay. Here we go. Um, let's see, I think I may have gotten a warning. Uh, probably fit. Oh, I should have just read the, <laughs> the error argument. Um, I typed in poly instead of polyfit, which is why that didn't work. So here we go. Let's try this one more time. I don't get an error signal, so that's good. And if we go to our figure, aha, here it is. Um, so once again, the red line is the linear regression, the black line is the second order quadratic regression, and the magenta line is what fitting a fourth order polynomial would look like. Now notice that the magenta line goes exactly through all of the points, okay? In some, it's, it's at some level, you can say that this is a really good fit because it literally fits all the data. In fact, what we can do is uh, go back to our definition of the error of a function, of a model, and compute the error of each of these models, okay? So, just as a reminder, the error we're going to say is uh, the data minus the uh, model evaluated at those points, at each of these data points. And uh, we're going to take that difference, square it, and add all of the points up together. And you can normalize this if you want to. So let's say 1 divided by n, where n is the number of points. Okay? So here is our definition of the error. And let's go ahead and compute this error for each of these models that I've just plotted here. And we'll see what they look like. Okay? So uh, E1 equals um, sum of y minus y hat 1 element wise squared. Um, and I also, uh, I said I would normalize it. So let's, let's divide that by the number of points in x. And uh, the same thing should allow me to evaluate it for the other two models. So the model number 2 and model number 3. We can evaluate their errors in a very similar way. Okay. So here we go, we're going to evaluate that. And uh, let's see what's going to happen here. Um, ah, I see what happened. <laughs> um, so this was, uh, if I checked the sizes of my, um, of my, of my vectors, I'll see that uh, y hat is evaluated for x hat, not on, on the x's. And so what I actually needed to do was uh, evaluate the polynomial at each x, okay? That will give us the prediction of what each of the lines actually evaluated to at the, the x locations. So let's amend these functions into be the following, okay? So let's see, that should work. And uh, so what we have to do now is now go back and look at error one. So that's the error of the uh, of the black line, of the, of, the, of the red line, which is error number one, model number one. And we can also look at the error of the second one. 
it's a smaller number, that's good. We're getting a smaller error, which is a good thing, right? If we then look at the error of the third model, we see that this is a very, very, very small number indeed. In fact, that number is practically zero. There's no error, OK? So there, we have one way of evaluating and comparing different models, right? So this problem is actually known as the, uh, as the model selection problem, right? When you don't know what the underlying model should be, you can build models of all different kinds, and then you end up with a problem of, well, which one do I use? Okay? And this is somewhat of a complicated question because there's wrong ways and right ways to evaluate different models, and different models are useful for different contexts. But uh, since we discussed evaluating the error of a model earlier, we, kind of, we, we tried using it to evaluate these three models that we built. Okay, and by this metric of computing the error of the model based on the data points, we can clearly see that model three is much better than model two, which is better than model one, which means that we should be using model three, right? That is the subject of the next section. <laughs>